From Oklahoma City, Linda Cavanaugh, Jane Giroux, Jim Williams, Bob Berry, this is News 4 Oklahoma. Good evening. The Oklahoma County Commission today decided to try and get the liquor by the drink issue on the April 30th ballot. But there are still some no guarantees that they can get all the paperwork done before that deadline. The legislature passed a liquor bill last week and now it's up to the counties to have a vote if they want liquor by the drink. To get the issue on the April 30th statewide ballot, all of the paperwork must be in the county election board by April 8th. And this morning, commissioners said they're hoping to be able to do just that. It is the people's question to determine. And of course, last year they voted and said that they wanted that option. So what we're doing is finishing that process to afford that option to the voters in Oklahoma County to make a determination of whether they want liquor by the drink on premises or not. Gerald says if they can't get it on the April 30th ballot, she would favor a special election on the issue to be held as soon as possible after that date. Well, regardless of when the liquor election does take place in the county, proponents have their campaign off and running. George Tomic has the story. The liquor by the drink question was approved mainly on the support it got in Oklahoma County and the other urban centers last September. Boosters feel that support is still there, but confusion and apathy are too. There are a number of voters who think that Oklahoma County already has liquor by the drink because we vote on it once, and that's not true. We don't have it, even though there was a statewide vote. There's another group that think uh, we should have liquor by the wink, the system that we've had in the past, and I'm convinced that that's not going to be a choice. And uh, there's another group of people who uh, think uh, that, that they simply don't have to abide by the law. Williams predicts 14 to 16 counties, including Oklahoma, will decide the liquor issue once and for all April 30th. By the way, opponents also feel apathy and a lack of knowledge could be factors in any local option election. And the battle lines are being drawn. Until then, Oklahoma County residents so inclined will continue to do what comes naturally, if not legally. George Tomic, News 4. Do you have the right to know where your state legislator gets his or her money? That question was brought before the state house this afternoon. Some lawmakers are attempting to strengthen the financial disclosure laws for all elected officials. The proposed law would require that all highly paid state employees and elected officials reveal who they're receiving money from and the amount of money received. That even includes money legislators are paid for speaking Public engagements. Right to know what they're being paid because they would not be making those speaking appearances were it not for the fact that they remember the legislature. This is the ticket into the speaking assignment. That's the bottom line. And the public has the right to know what they're being paid and who's paying them. The bill passed the House without a dissenting vote. The measure now goes to the Senate. State lawmakers may be going home next month. Word came today that state leaders are considering a two-week legislative recess. News 4's Stephanie Frederick reports that lawmakers need to buy some time until they find answers to some important money questions. Mr. Benson, now ask unanimous consent the bill be considered in gross and placed on third and final reading. Will there be objections? Two-thirds of this legislative session is already gone. Few of those much talked about reforms have been addressed. Only a handful of bills have become law. And final work on the state budget is far from complete. At the beginning of the session, legislative leaders promised state employees a pay raise. Teachers were not to be left out. They too were promised salary increases before the session ends. State leaders also pledged to pump nearly 200 million extra dollars into the education coffers. But all of those promises are now on hold. I, mean, I think we have an uphill battle. The problem, lawmakers won't know how much money they'll have to spend until after the April 30th statewide election. Voters hold the fate of a $143 million question, whether to change the state's revenue estimating formula. Because of this uncertainty, House Speaker Jim Barker says he may recommend a two-week recess. And I think that... Um we probably should have that safeguard <laughs> under the circumstances so that we do not have to rush in preparing the budget. I think we'd be better off just uh, keeping our noses to the grindstone. But Senate Leader Roger Randall doesn't like the idea of a recess. He'd prefer for legislators to keep their feet to the fire, believing more pressure will bring about more work. We may have to take a recess just to deal technically with all the problems we've got. 
But I think it's always hard to explain to the people uh, why we're at home, uh, apparently on vacation, when we've got unfinished business here at the Capitol. The Constitution only allows the legislature to meet for 90 legislative days. So with the recess, lawmakers will have more time to complete their work. But without the break, lawmakers will be forced to move on a fast track. And some fear that a rush job may not necessarily mean a good job. At the state capitol, Stephanie Frederick, News 4. The federal government says Oklahoma City must clean up its air by this fall. Several times last year, this air monitoring station on North Pennsylvania detected pollution levels above federal limits. Health experts blame the illegal levels of carbon monoxide on excessive vehicle emissions. Well, those experts say the unsafe emissions are caused by cars using the wrong fuel or cars that have their pollution control devices removed. A recent survey suggests that a third of all local vehicles do not meet government clean air standards. That problem may be solved by a new state law that requires inspections of emission control devices. Those pollution control checks could begin as early as this summer. But one of the biggest winners in last night's city election spent his day assessing his victory. Former police chief I.G. Purser shocked many observers when he defeated incumbent Bob McCoy by a wide margin. Bob Donaldson has more on Oklahoma City's new councilman. Relatively few voters took part in the biggest upset of election day. A little more than 3,000 people went to the polls in Ward 1. That's not unusual for a city council race. But the voters did surprise many when they chose the winner. I felt like it was time to let someone else run the police department. And... I.G. Purser resigned as police chief in December of 1976. He left the force to go into the oil business, but when his company failed, he retired, and Purser virtually disappeared from public life. That was the most awkward thing that I've ever done in my life. It really was. Purser's council victory marks his return. He won the Ward 1 seat with almost 75% of the vote, the resounding upset now allows him to address the problems he sees in today's police department. They're confronted with so many civil suits now that uh, they're afraid to do their job in some cases. And when you get a uh, police officer in that situation, you have a bad situation and it needs to be corrected not only here but nationwide. It's very important for every member of the council. So a newcomer will soon sit at the city council horseshoe, a newcomer that many figured would never get elected and who instead arrives with a mandate from his constituents. Bob Donaldson, News 4. Two other councilmen in Oklahoma City won their re-election bids. Well, look out for more showers. Jim Williams will have details in a moment. And Carl Albert gets his walking papers from the hospital. I've always loved life. I still do. And my attitude about it, my love for it, has not changed. He's known as the little giant to people who followed his career, and today he went home to those people who know him best. Medical reporter Terry Cook tells us Carl Albert was discharged from the hospital this morning, but still has a long recovery period before him. We're so sorry to learn of your recent hospitalization. Please know that our thoughts and prayers are with you. God bless you. Sincerely, Ronald Reagan. And... Uh, of course, you know, strange thing now, that came from a man that I never have voted for. There's an unmistaken zest for life about former House Speaker Carl Albert. It's that quality that undoubtedly prompted hundreds of friends, including President Nancy Reagan, to send well wishes over the last week and a half's hospital stay. Carl Albert tells us he feels great. I've always loved life, I still do. And my attitude about it, my love for it, has not changed. Carl Albert headed home today, but still has a long recovery period before him. He and his wife will be staying in Oklahoma City for the next six weeks while the former speaker goes through Presbyterian's cardiac rehabilitation program. After that, they plan to head back to McAllister and relax. As far as the operation goes, the 76-year-old tells us his only complaint is he wished he'd had it sooner. Terry, Cook News 4. I wish him well. First few hours of spring today were soggy ones for Oklahoma City residents. A series of thunderstorms dumped rain all across the state and made driving a bit hazardous this morning. Believe it or not, this is Lakeshore Drive and Wilshire Boulevard. Nearby Kids Lake overran its banks and flooded the road. The water forced traffic to slow down and was a problem during rush hour. There are more reports of minor flooding on Interstate 40 as well.
And the high waters have caused one cancellation. The Falls Lakeview School will be closed tomorrow due to flooded roads. That's the Falls Lakeview School closed tomorrow due to high waters. And we've had enough water. We're going to try to get it shut off, but it's still coming down oh. in a few, few places. Mostly very light, though. But the southeast still may get some more. So Gosh. we'll have to be watching that. But some improvement tomorrow. Right now, we continue with the drizzly light rain pattern outside and some fog. Temperature is still at 49 degrees. Relative humidity is up there at 93%. The pressure 29.78 and steady with that rain and fog around. Winds northeast at 15 miles per hour. On radar, the heavier activity now continues to be down in southern sections of the state, right along the Red River, on both sides of it actually. Very slow movement of this uh, pattern. This has been through the area down there now for the past two or three hours, so they probably have added substantially to the already heavy rains they've received down there. They've had from two to three inches in one spot. Marlow had almost four inches. A pattern of lighter activity through central sections, this drizzle here in Oklahoma City, up south of Ponca City, on over to Perry in the Paul Husk area, pattern area moving north northeast and way off to the southeast across the border in Texas, some of the heavier activity there. Now here's the way things look outside on our state map. A low pressure center now in the Dallas-Fort Worth area is moving eastward and winds behind it and north of it are to the northeast now about 15 miles per hour and light drizzle and fog cover a good bit of the area of Oklahoma with some of the heavier activity now down near this low pressure center. Anything severe, uh, severe uh, that might develop is going to be in association with this system in Texas, we think. So we're not expecting much in the way of heavy activity or severe activity in Oklahoma. Maybe some locally heavy spots of rain mainly in the south, central, and southeast for uh, the next few hours. Here's the way our surface map depicts the whole pattern across the nation. High pressure now up just northwest of the Great Lakes is bringing cooler air through that area. Low pressure in Texas moving to the east. A lot of showers coming up around it. Not much to our west, as you can see at the moment. A little bit of activity with the front and the eastern sections of the country around Pennsylvania and New York State. Another system off the west coast will be watching for some action later on. Our satellite picture, a good shot showing you this cloud band in our area, the low pressure center on down through the region of Texas, as you can see. This thing's wrapped around now. A lot of moisture is continuing to funnel northward into Oklahoma. This whole pattern will be slipping eastward during the next 24 hours. And tomorrow morning, our map should look something like this. We'll start out with that low over in southern Arkansas. And as the day progresses, the precipitation pattern will let up and end from west to east. I don't think too many areas will see the sun, but the rain should have ended most sections by this time tomorrow. Our statistics today in the Oklahoma City area, not much of a range, really. We had a low of 49, a high of 51. Normal 38 and 62, records 12 and 92. We've had 2.2 inches of rain here at Channel 4. Our forecast for tonight, rain and cool thunderstorms mainly in the southeast and south central parts. And for Thursday, rain ending from west in the morning, in the west in the morning, and over the state late in the day, mild temperatures. And for Friday, partly cloudy and warmer. The metropolitan area tonight, rain and cool tomorrow, rain ending around noon, we think. Then decreasing clouds and warm, a little bit warmer tomorrow. Uh, for lows, we are expecting kind of cool in the northwest, 30s panhandle. Uh, 40s elsewhere, highs tomorrow, 50s and 60s. And for Oklahoma City, 45, climbing up just a bit, up to around 54 tomorrow. Okay. And this summer, we'll wish we had some of this. Yes, again. that's right. true. Thanks, Jim. Yesterday, you know, Ozark Airlines announced that they are coming to Oklahoma City. This morning, Muse Air officials said they also will begin service from Will Rogers Airport. This morning, the president of the company held a news conference to explain why he's bringing his service here. Muse is going to merge with Southwest Airlines, as you may know, and both companies want to offer travelers to Dallas an alternative. President Sam Coates says, quote, Southwest is the Chevrolet of air travel. We are the Cadillacs. Despite the merger, both companies will remain competitive. I used the analogy before. It's almost going to be like two divisions of, of Chrysler Corporation or General Motors. Uh, they may be under the same corporate umbrella, but they are highly competitive. And we think that we will remain competitive with Southwest, even though we're, we're part of their corporate umbrella. Muse is the nation's only non-smoking air carrier. There will be five daily flights to Dallas, Love Field, starting April 1st. The fares will range from $34 to $45 one way. Hmm, good news for Oklahoma travelers. New candidate has come to the fore in the Tulsa head football coaching search. And an update report as the OU Sooners work out in Dallas for tomorrow's NCAA game. Big Bob Berry is next. So what's going on down on the farm? Well, if you dropped by the state capitol today, you could have found out. Agriculture groups from across our state gathered in the capitol rotunda to educate city slickers and school kids about the farm and farm products. 
They showed off their goods and offered samples of items like goat's cheese and goat's meat. The exhibit was all in an effort to show how important agriculture is to Oklahoma. We are trying to get consumer information out to the public so they're aware of how the food is produced, how it gets to the store, not just that it's, they need to know that it comes from the farm to the store and that it just doesn't appear in the store. Today's exhibits were on display to celebrate Agriculture Week in Oklahoma. What are you celebrating in sports today? Holy cow. Oh, we got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At this time tomorrow, the fourth-ranked Oklahoma Sooners will be playing Louisiana Tech in the semifinals of the Midwest Regional of the NCAA Basketball Tournament. The Sooners held a brief workout earlier today in Dallas at Reunion Arena. Robbie Robertson was there and has this report. Don't get hurt, Robbie. Caution, caution. OU head coach Billy Tubbs will be looking for victory number 31 tomorrow. If he doesn't get it tomorrow, he'll have to wait until next year because the season will be over. This is pressure time. You have to be good every time out. And as the fifth-year head coach watched his team go through a spirited workout today, he is in hopes his ball club will be able to handle the pressure. Nobody puts the pressure on us that, that we expect out of ourselves. So we don't look at it as, as pressure at all, and I don't think there's any pressure on us. I think getting out of the first round took the pressure off of us, although that worries me a little bit. I, th I think we play better if there is that so-called pressure on us. I like that. If the Sooners can win tomorrow, the pressure won't go away because there'll be another ball game on Saturday, and Coach Tubbs and the Sooners will be one step closer to the Final Four. From Dallas, Robbie Robertson, News 4, Sports. The OU Louisiana Tech game tomorrow begins at 5.35 p.m. If the Sooners win, they will play the winner of the Memphis State Boston College game Saturday at 12.58 p.m., also in Dallas Reunion Arena. The Oklahoma Sooners basketball team is the only Big A team still playing basketball this season. Nebraska lost to UCLA last night to end the Huskers season. Nebraska lost to UCLA 83-62 in the second round of the NIT. Bob Barry Jr. reports. UCLA's Reggie Miller took advantage of Nebraska turnovers last night and scored a career-high 29 points as the Bruins led by six in the first half. UCLA also got their fast break going. Corey Gaines dished to Montel Hatcher, who buried the jumper for two of his 18, and UCLA had a 10-point halftime lead. Second half now, Nebraska tried to come back. Dave Hoppin missed the patented turnaround, but Curtis Moore followed with the stuff. Nebraska trailed by only six with 14 minutes to play. Harvey Marshall made up for some earlier turnovers with the outside shot. Hoppin led the Huskers with 23, but UCLA began to pull away. Nigel Miguel took the gains pass and canned the corner shot. Then Gary Melanson missed on the baseline, but Brad Wright weaseled inside for the follow and foul. UCLA ended Nebraska's season at 16 and 14 with an 82 to 63 win in the NIT. Bob Barry Jr. News 4 Sports. A group of five Associated Press writers has selected 5'10 forward Danny Manning of Kansas as the leader of a group of all-freshman basketball team stars from this season. Joining Danny Manning on the all-freshman team are David Rivers of Notre Dame, John Williams of LSU, Cedric Henderson of Georgia, and Gary Grant of Michigan. All five players reached the NCAA tournament, by the way. The University of Tulsa continues their search for a new head football coach. The university said it is interviewing at least six of the 50 applicants for the job. Tulsa President Jay Pascal Twyman says the TU hopes to name a new coach by Saturday since spring practice is set to begin next Monday. Today, Tulsa interviewed Nevada Reno coach Chris Alt and Nebraska Omaha coach Sandy Buda. Stan Parrish of Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia will also be interviewed. It now looks less likely that Larry Lacewell is in the Tulsa coaching picture, according to one source so we visited with. One golf note, rookie Phil Blackmer has the early lead, 65, five under par on the PGA event this week. All righty. Okay, thanks. Jerry Adams is in the newsroom now, so let's go to him to find out what the News 4 team is working on for 10 o'clock, Jerry. Well, Bob Donaldson will take us to a teen entertainment center in Norman that's big on near beer and profits these days. And we'll have more on an extortion case in Norman. The FBI says three people jailed tonight after trying to get $50,000 from the owner of some IGA stores. And we'll hear about a hot new fad going on south of the border. Those stories and more all coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. We'll see you then. Sounds tasty. Check on the five-day forecast in a moment. And we'll talk to a Hollywood star maker. He's the man who gave the world Farrah Fawcett and Suzanne Somers. I'm Carrie Robertson. Next on News 4, a visit with Jay Bernstein, Hollywood's star maker. A reminder that PM Magazine comes your way this evening right after NBC Nightly News. Tonight you'll meet James Brolin, the sexy star of Hotel and former colleague of Marcus Welby. Brolin is a strong, silent, and intense kind of guy, they say, and he'll talk openly about his marriage and his relationship with Jan Smithers. 
tonight on PM Magazine at 6.30. Jim, will you talk openly about the weather? Very openly, mm -hmm. very openly. <laughs> Tomorrow, we're going to have some improvement. And by Friday, this low pressure center will be over Tennessee and the one approaching uh, from our west, this will be our weekend weather, so maybe some showers. Here's our five-day forecast specifically for Oklahoma City. A few showers early in the morning. It'll be ending high of only 54, then up in the 60s for the remaining days, maybe 70 for the end of the period. And a chance for thunderstorms right now looks like it'll be on Saturday. Now back to the desk. Thank you, Jim. Born 47 years ago in Oklahoma City, Jay Bernstein always dreamed of a life amid the glamour, wealth, and power of Hollywood. Entertainment editor Kerry Robertson reports. Thank you, Jane. Jay Bernstein's dreams all came true. His career began as a $40 a week mailboy for the William Morris Agency. Today, he is known as Hollywood's star maker supreme. I'll say, you know, you created, I never created a star in my life. All I do is help maximize the potential of the person. Over the past 25 years, Jay Bernstein has become one of Hollywood's most powerful men because of his unique talent for packaging actors and making them phenomenal successes. His clients read like a who's who in Hollywood. Farrah Fawcett, Suzanne Somers, Melissa Sue Anderson, Cecily Tyson, Linda Evans, Gil Gerard, and hundreds of others. How does Jay Bernstein recognize that special quality that makes someone a star? I think it's to find that they have three things. Ooh, there's certain people like Farrah Fawcett, Suzanne Summers, Linda Evans, people that I saw, that I saw stardust in their eyes. The other is a look, a look that I think can be commercial and that America will buy. And the third thing is talent. But talent, although it's essential, is only 35% of 100% of making it in Hollywood. The other 65% is having the right team behind you. I always thought of Farrah as today's Betty Grable in the beginning. And Betty Grable had a pinup poster and a white bathing suit with her hair piled up looking over her shoulder. Well, I didn't want to duplicate the same pinup poster, but what I did is I did a new poster, and that was the Farrah Fawcett poster, which was the best-selling poster, and that really started her to be a star. With Linda Evans, I was trying to find a role model for the perfect 40-year-old. And I saw Linda Evans at a party, and I said, how would you like to be the role model to change it from 30 to 40 for women? And she thought that was a good thing to do. We worked for three years on it. And then Jane Fonda came in with the workout and Victoria Principal and all the other women. But it, uh, it worked, but that's what I do. I think of the angle. Friday, Jay Bernstein talks about his latest project, a 15-city media crusade to drum up public support for the TV series, My Cammer. Thank you very much. It's the creme de la creme of the want ads. The federal government publishes it, and it's called Policy and Supporting Positions. You'll have to shell out nine bucks for it, but it's page after page of job listings. There's no civil servants exam either. It's all in who you know, because President Reagan is the guy you'll have to talk to if you're interested in the job. As a warning, most of the jobs have been filled. After all, he's had five years to interview applicants. But just today, you know, he filled the labor position secretary, so you never know what's available. You never know, but I think I'm staying here for a while. Would you really go to Hollywood or Washington? <laughs> Oklahoma City. Good. <laughs> Tony News, we'll see you at 10. Good night. News for Oklahoma is a presentation.